right, Genevieve, we've got a letter to review today. So let's just dive right in. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Good. (laughs) Me too. Um, Very first up, we have the title says single dad dating problems. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a good topic. This could go a lot of different ways. Well, it could, and it could go on forever. (laughs) I know. It absolutely could. (laughs) Already, let's say vulnerability. We love this. Okay. So he says, hello, all. I have come here for helpful and hopeful guidance or reassurance, or maybe just to vent. We, we, we can help you with that. Um, <laughs> I'm a single father of a nine-year-old. My kiddo doesn't live with me full time, but lives with his mom in a different state. Wow. That's tough. That is very tough. That is very tough. I am still very, very, very involved in his life. We talk almost every day. His mom and I do the best we can to co-parent, even with the distance. And I get him in the summer times. So before we go on, I think first and foremost, you and I will both mutually agree that that investment and you know commitment to this child is already, you're doing great. Absolutely. So absolutely, yes, absolutely. exactly. So, um, and then he says, I have taken a break from dating since I've been working on my career and settling into my new home state. Ooh, okay. I have finally decided to put myself back out there, but I have found it extremely difficult as a parent. I am very upfront about my situation with my kiddo and all that. And honestly, it's been horrible. I honestly have been uh, feeling like this for the past year since either have put myself out there that maybe I am meant to be alone. I don't know. Honestly, patience is just gone more than two years of trying and just, I don't know what to do or what to try anyway. Thank you for stopping by and listening, reading this. Thank you so much. And that's his letter. There's a lot to unpack here. Well, there is. My first question is, are you really ready? You know, are you really ready? Because it sounds like there's this willingness and wanting to try. There's a little bit of self-sabotage going on at the same time with finding all the reasons why not to date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't know his full story. We don't know if he's been on dates, if he's had bad experiences, if people have rejected him, if things have not worked out, we kind of need a bit more information to really dive in. But I'm going to assume that he has tried. Right. From what he's saying, that's Mm -hmm. all we can do. And it's not got him anywhere. So it's always a huge adjustment when families split up and when there are children involved, both parents. And I think there's, there's probably more on the father's side, more often than not, to try and make more of an effort to for the weekends and the time that they're not with their children Mm -hmm. so it's often a timing issue as well of how do I pack in time for me to unravel everything that I've gone through this separation the breakup it sounds like he's moved states as well might even be he's got a new job he's trying to do a lot there as it is Mm -hmm. so to pack in a new relationship on top of that Maybe it's just about timing. Maybe he just needs a bit more period of adjustment Mm -hmm. to get used to that, or even working with a coach Mm -hmm. to to align what his expectations are of the journey and of himself in all of this. Mm -hmm. I kind of have hard on himself. I don't know. What do you think? (laughs) I think so too. I think what I, my, my, as I'm unfolding this and, and as was reading it, he's a stranger to himself, new state new situation, um, Mm -hmm. a parent, which every stage is new, right. And we have to adapt and, and then, and then new relationship status where he has to redefine this woman that he was married to for all that time and had a child with, how do we functionally co-parent? So I think that you're right that the timing, it may not be right to introduce somebody else into his life, that maybe he needs to introduce himself and accept his situation and discover who I am today, not who I was and who I want to be, but really identify and shake his own hand, right? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> nice I'm to meet you in the bathroom. <laughs> in the mirror, like, who are you? What do you, what do you like? What are you doing? And a yeah. new state 
and a new environment. And he did mention two years of living here, but a lot happens in two years. And I think I heard somewhere that, that adjusting to a new area in a living situation takes a lot longer than we think to adjust and oh, let yeah. that become our home. Yeah. So yeah. I think we push pause here and, and oh, totally. I totally. agree with you. It's, he's, he's in transit. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's transitional right now. Mm-hmm. And I think from some of the stuff he's saying, he's trying to push himself when he's not quite ready. Yeah. And sometimes we feel we need to be doing things when we don't want to be doing things. Right. But this is the perfect time to reach out and have a conversation with a coach and just say, I just want to talk this through. Mm-hmm. What does it look like? And right. we're both coaches and we talk to people all the time. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, what we do is we unravel where people are where they want to be and what that journey in between looks like. And I think I love he's that. stuck there. He's I think he's stuck. Exactly. And also, can I just pause and recognize exactly what you just said that he's saying it's not working. So maybe I just need to give up. Why do we do that? Why do human beings, because it's not going the way that we kind of hope or think it should, or are being told you need to move on, come on. So why is it that his default or our default as a society is, it's not working. I just give up. Why do we do that to ourselves? And how do we manage that? Because I think it's the kindest thing sometimes that we can do rather than feeling that we failed. Yeah. And that something's not working. We just give up. We just go, you know what? It's not working. But what I would rather hear him say is right now, this isn't right for me. Right. So I'm going to press that pause button. I'm going to take time out for me to uncover a, who I am, right. B, what I can bring to the table. So I would really encourage him to take this time to reflect on where is he in his life? What's important to him Mm -hmm. so that he recognizes those values when he does meet someone. I'd also encourage him to get out. As I was going to say, a single man, (laughs) not as someone who wants to date, not as daddy daycare but just as a single man go out join clubs do things where you can meet other people and find out what floats your boat yes you never know what's going to happen in life so i think it's really important that he just engages in knowing more people around him getting some friendship groups getting some support around him and just enjoying life it doesn't sound like he's been doing that it sounds like he's been existing surviving doing what's best for his son in in the Mm -hmm. father capacity having a good co-parenting relationship takes a lot of effort it It really does it does but it is so beautiful and i think Mm -hmm. i love the big pause button i'm visualizing just for him gigantic pause button right and just right push pause and i think let's look at the things that are going right you are co-parenting in a completely different state with a woman where the relationship did not work. And now you're figuring out how to make it work. Now you are figuring out how to be a great dad and how to enjoy those summers. You are functioning in relationships today, right? And I love also that if we recognize that and he takes a moment and kind of stands up on his soapbox and says, Hey man, this is good. I am doing really well at this. And then gets out and plays, not with any hidden agenda or intention or looking for a specific type, just discovering and playing in this new playground that is this new state that he's moved to as well. Go play. Go Go discover, enjoy. You know, some people are so focused on a destination that they really don't enjoy the journey. Mm, I love and that. for him, I really want him to enjoy this journey and embrace it. And, you know, no agenda, no right. expectations, just take the pressure off. Sounds right. like he's putting a lot of pressure on himself. Mm-hmm. And I think people do. People, sometimes it could be other people's expectations that they place on you. It could be family. Oh, you've been single for far too long. Get out there. We want a new woman sitting at the table for Christmas. You know? Right. There's all of these things. Find that... you a good one. Yeah, absolutely. <gasps> Friends and family can sometimes put pressure on. And I want I want anyone in this situation where it's not the right time mm. to just say to people, you know what? 
thank you for your love. Thank you for your advice right now. I just want to be me. I just want to enjoy being me. And it's so important when you come out of a relationship, actually, to have that time Mm -hmm. to recover in a healthy way. Your your heart's got to heal. You don't want to go into another relationship with a broken heart and all this emotion and baggage for someone else to untangle. You Mm -hmm. want to go as a whole and complete person. Right. So I think it's also important to recognize that side of it too. Yes. I, that's exactly right. And if we have that to bring into the right relationship, the right person, the right mindset, the odds are more likely that this same relationship status won't happen again. You're going into it with an open mind, open heart, loving yourself, acceptance. These are all words that are the right thing. So I think also what we'll, what we'll say for everybody that feels like, screw it, I give up. I am just going to be alone allow yourself to be a signal to your brain to say, wait a minute. Okay. Giving up is not the answer, but it's not the, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad place to be in. Instead of giving up, I'm going to do some self-discovery and I'm going to fall in love with myself. If you're feeling agitated as a dater, if you're feeling like you just want to give up that you're right, Genevieve, the way you first started this, that's a sure tell sign that you might not be ready (laughs) because dating can be hard, but it also can be so fun when you're Mm -hmm. in the right state of mind. So getting those additional resources, you know, when you're ready to make changes and set goals. Yes. I love that. Call us, let us help you. Let us coach you. Let us guide you to get you to a place where you can see straight and appreciate the dating journey. So I think it's just step-by-step. It is. It's these little steps and these little steps get, you get more comfortable with them and you take bigger steps and it's a fluid journey. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's fluid. And uh, the other thing I'm going to say is don't put a timeline on it. Right. Lots of people say, right, I'm going to be single for six months. I'm going to try for six months. And then on April 1st, I'm going to say, stuff it. Right. <laughs> oh, November 1st, that's it. I'm giving up. I'm just closing all my apps. I'm I'm not doing anything anymore. I'm not going out. I'm just bang. Right. The only person you're going to hurt is you. Absolutely. Because opportunities come up every day that you mm-hmm. could be missing out on. Right. And I really want to encourage people to not put timelines mm-hmm. on things. Some people take a week to heal. Some people take 10 years to heal. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever's working for you. Mm-hmm. So please don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. Please enjoy the journey. I can't say it enough. Yes. And you know what? That destination point could change during that journey five, six, seven times. <laughs> it's Good point. I think people get so fixated on where they want to be and where they want to go. Right. I mean, how many of us have gone into a career matchmaking hello (laughs) did we want to do this at school no did we even know it existed no it existed exactly (laughs) (laughs) so and it's the same with dating it's the same with relationships we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring we don't even know what the rest of the day is going to bring half the time Mm -hmm. so you know stop being so hard on yourself right this is about you this is about recovering this is about enjoying who you are and that's, that's all it should be about. Nothing right. else right now. Exactly. So Mr. Single Dad Dating Problems, you don't have dating problems. No. <laughs> you are lovable. You are worth it. Take a deep breath and just rediscover the man in the mirror and love him because this is the best journey possible for you to be on today, right? And it will evolve and grow and you will find someone special when you're ready. So I love this. Thank you so much, Genevieve. And I have to say to our audiences, my goodness, we love your letters. We love dissecting them. We love helping. So if you have any burning questions, inquiries, keep them anonymous if you want to, or if you want to share your name, we love everything. The ability to help with, you know, with what we do is just why we're here. So take advantage of us and, and write those letters in. So until then, if you are interested in learning more about our matchmaking services, you can go to matchmakingcompany.com. Visit us. Again, we don't bite, just 
you know, check us out. And of course, as always, if you're interested in learning more, um, just dating advice, just overall general tips, please follow us, like subscribe to this, this channel. We have so many extra goodies coming up that we want to share with you. So until then, happy dating. And thank you, Genevieve, again, for joining us. You're welcome, Heather. Bye. Bye.